the woman in my story, in the form of words, believes that life is created by words. She believes that intimate relationships are created by words and through words. For her, words are sacred. They are life itself. So I will read um, some fragments from the short story. All she needed were words. They kept her alive. Parting her lips just so, she used to put them on her tongue, one by one. She tasted them slowly, pressing them to the palate, waiting for them to dissolve into a sweet bitterness that nourished her body and soul. She liked the taste of all words, even the ones that made her shiver, for she knew life was meant to be ripe in fullness. She said, red tulips, and touched the moist petals with care. Moist, she said, looking inside the black center, and yellow, she said, taking a deep breath to absorb the flower and to feel it within. Hot, she said, leading her finger through a candle flame and feeling it burn her the way she remembered. With words and through words, she was able to connect and become one with life. It was the only life she knew. That night, she stood on the top of the tall tower facing a dark forest. All she wanted was to die. She wanted to die the way no one ever died before. She wanted to disappear with no trace and then come out on the other side without memory. The man she married was a rock, broad and heavy, something he wanted to change, but with gentle fingers and deep blue eyes. When she asked him for words, he said he preferred numbers, but was willing to try something new. I can like words, he said, and she hoped for the best. He led her away to a tower on the edge of the forest. Every morning, early at dawn, he would leave her to travel distant and strange roads to meet people who burdened him with numbers packed neatly into narrow columns. He traced the numbers with his long fingers up and down for hours to identify similarities, differences, and other conjunctions that were supposed to explain the order of useful things. Maybe one more fragment. Um, the fourth man was a pilgrim. He knocked on the door of the tower and asked for water. His words were clear and his asking was tender. Do you like words? She asked, already knowing the answer. They exchanged many words over many days. He interrupted his travels once a week, and she was grateful. Every Saturday, they lay naked next to each other and shared. One day, he said, you have to die before you can live again after all you have endured. She didn't understand, but took his gentle word for it. Can you help me die? She asked. I will make you die softly, he said and she closed her eyes, showing him she was ready. He kissed her forehead first, and then all the parts of her body that were ready for him. He planted words behind her ears. He planted words at the bottom of her neck, in the niche big enough for the tip of his tongue. He planted them in the soft skin of her armpits and in the creases of her elbows. Some he planted in the warm spot below her breasts 
and sun in her blood, warming up the gentle surface of her skin. He was generous beyond her imagination and let her have all the new words he made for himself. As he kissed her, she opened and revealed herself without shame or guilt. Then one Saturday he came changed by his travels in a way she didn't know yet. She looked at him and felt her heart sink. I have to tell you something, he said. His face turned white and became translucent like a piece of old parchment, and his gentle blue eyes turned black. He was about to say something terrible. She could sense it. She smiled to give him courage. What is it? she asked. He interlaced his fingers so tightly that his skin turned white and red. He said, I'm thinking. Her heart was pounding. She recognized the old feeling of fear that filled her chest all the way up to her throat when the mute man pressed her to the ground. Finally, he said, I have sinned against you. I found someone with words that meant a lot to me, for I grew to love them in a faraway land I left a year ago. And I have been hungry for those words since then. A strong thunder shook her body and lifted her above the table where they were sitting. She arched in midair, and her eyes turned into white moons. He watched her come up and fall down many times until she was ready to face him again. They looked at each other in silence. She reached across the table for his hand to see if she was able to feel anything, and she did. Finally, when all his words were spoken, she waited to see what she felt in her heart, and then she said what she felt. I forgive you. I forgive you not because of what you did was right, but because I want to forget. I want to empty myself from your words, for they were false.